know. I don't even know if anybody is up. Um, if you come on, say hello in the comments. Um, I had something I wanted to share. And I had this moment or remembrance that um, occurred for me this evening. Hey, Angela, dear, how are you? Um, as you guys are coming in, tap the screen, say hello. I know it's like super, super late. I'm never, I don't know if I've ever done a broadcast um, this late, but I promised that I would share. Hey, Houston, how are you? I promised that I would share um, what just happened for me or what I just recognized and realized. And I really thought it would be a blessing to someone else too. Can you guys hear me? Let me know if you can hear me for those of you who are coming on and those of you who catch me on the replay. Um, you can say hello. I always comment. But you guys see in the title, it says, have you ever felt like you couldn't pray? Have you ever felt like you couldn't pray? And I know that may seem odd because, you know, some who come on may say, well, just open your mouth and pray. But um, I was listening to a gentleman this afternoon and I won't share his name because I haven't been following him long and I'm really particular about who I share with my audience um, because we're talking about people's lives and their salvation and all that other stuff, life. But um, the message was really, really good and I kind of caught just a portion of it. And he was talking about, you know, what's really occurring when you feel like you can't pray. And it made me remember a season where I felt like I couldn't pray. I mean, I was, <clears throat> you know, I could listen to people talking about the word. I could listen to messages like I normally do, um, sermons. I could do all of that. But when it came time to pray, I was struggling to pray. Like I would say a couple words and then I just, I couldn't even find words to say. Um, I could barely, for those of you who um, have received tongues I could barely pray in the spirit I mean I just couldn't pray and so when I heard him tonight talking about what's occurring when you know you're in a position where you feel like you can't pray he said that it's a soul issue now that made so much sense to me I don't know how many of you have heard me share that the fight is not to you know continue to get your spirit fed because we hear that a lot, I'm going to church to get my spirit fed. But if you've already given your life to Christ, regardless of what you're doing after you gave your life to Christ, if you've already given your life to Christ, then the spirit of God is already in you. And so the fight is really to get your soul into alignment with your spirit. And he said that when you can't pray, there's usually an attack on your soul um, that that is occurring and when i thought about that because your soul is your mind your will and your emotions remember that your soul is your mind your will and your emotions now this is what's so profound because whenever you i don't know how many of you i've been in a toxic relationship a couple um toxic relationships before and one of the things that occurred for me was even after the toxic relationships were somewhat over, you know how there's still like some residue or whatever, um, I would still have thoughts about some of the conversations or some things that occurred, you know, during the relationships. Any of you, you all put it in the comments. Have you ever dated someone who was toxic? If you have, put me in the comments. If you've ever dated someone um, in your lifetime who was toxic. Can you guys hear me? Because I hear, I see some of you like coming in and out. Is it clear? Somebody put clear in the comments for me. If not, I'll figure out um, maybe a different time to, to be able to come back on. Just waiting for you guys to put clear in the comments. I'm going to do an introduction while I'm waiting on you guys just in case there's just a lag in uh, Facebook. Uh, but I'm Tanya Wilson Cherry. I'm a growth strategist, business coach and mentor to women, service-based business owners who wanna brand, build and profit more in their life and in their business. 
I teach from a three-point perspective, abundance, mindset, personal growth, and business building. I believe that your mind has a lot to do with everything that's transpiring in your life, even now. So I help clients from all around the world. I'm, I feel so amazingly blessed. I was thinking about that um, this evening as well. Um, but I help them to grow their business, find balance, time freedom, financial freedom um, in their life. And one of the things I, I did recently, and this is another reason why this really spoke to me. So I created um, what's called an affirmation guide. And in that guide, I talked about the soul. And so if you're struggling with um, procrastination, uh, if you're struggling with, um, or if you have a desire to manifest something new, um, if you're trying to overcome negative feelings, things like that, I feel that affirmations are one of the most powerful and impactful things that you can do in order to create something new or create new outcomes in your life. And I just uh, recently finished creating an affirmations guide and I talked about the soul. So when the gentleman was talking about you know, when you're in a space where you just feel like you can't pray. I've heard people say, I can't even pray. Um, he just talked about how, you know, your normally your soul is under attack. So remember, let's break the soul down. The soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. The soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And so sometimes when we hear attack, sometimes we go into... You know, maybe the spiritual, well, all of it is spiritual because you, you guys do know that all of y'all are spirits, right? All of you are who are coming on your spirits. So, um, but sometimes we go into that aspect of it. But, you know, when I think about even being in your soul, mind, will, or emotion being under some type of attack is when you're consistently and constantly thinking about something that doesn't serve you. I'm going to say that once more. When you're consistently and constantly thinking about something that does not serve you, that I consider that an attack. And I believe that there's so many hidden keys within the Bible if we sit down and really take the time to one, pray before we read it and read the word. It's just so many principles, everyday lifestyle principles um, in there. You know, they're based on the word of God, but they're lifestyle principles. And I want to share... Um, a scripture with you all that I thought about when I was listening to all of this. And so one of the things and one of the reasons why I started using affirmations, I didn't know that's what you even call them. Um, I also didn't know that there were people who were out studying the brain <laughs> who were proving scientifically that affirmations do work. But I use them because I needed to get unstuck. So I needed to change um, my mind. I needed to change the, the amount of overwhelm and frustration I was enduring. I um, opened a brick and mortar service based business. I got married and had a baby all in a three year time frame. And I was also in a dysfunctional marriage at the same time. So if you all could just put all of that together and imagine, and this was my first child, you know, what was transpiring during that time, it was a lot going on. And I knew I needed to change what I saw. And I knew in order to change what I was seeing, I had to change what I was saying. And what I was actually doing was retraining my brain. So many of us have thought patterns or processes that we, um, we do now, even in our adult life, that we learned early in childhood. So in my affirmation guide, I talked about how the first seven years of our life is so crucial. It kind of begins to form even how we function as adults. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't change that, right? That's where the retraining the brain comes in. But oftentimes, if we're not aware, then we are taking on those same mindsets. But listen what this scripture right here says. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers so imagine if you have you know um, something new that you want to manifest in your life a new home uh, a, a new car you want to change the quality your quality of life 
right? But all of the words that you're speaking to yourself don't edify you at all. They all say, I'll never be able to afford that. Um, I'll never earn enough money for that. You know, we'll never qualify. It's saying all of these things. Now, notice the scripture says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. So every time you're saying things that don't edify you, that corrupt whatever your desires are, whatever you desire to do, then you are not ministering grace unto yourself because you are the hearer. Do you guys get that? Somebody tap the screen if this is making sense to you all. I figure, you know, y'all kingdom or, you know, have a desire to, you know, know more about God if you're even on listening to this broadcast or maybe you just popped on, you saw my name and you said, what is she talking about? But I wanted to share with you guys just how important it is for you to um, be very mindful of what you're saying. So one of the things I did I got some note cards and I still have those same note cards now. They're so old actually that I ended up putting tape over them, <clears throat> but I call them my affirmation cards. And I have my daughter to create one as well, but I have a laminating machine now, so I laminated hers. But I wrote down every affirming thought that I could think about what I desired my life to become. It's the way I got unstuck, it's the way I transitioned. So I owned a brick and mortar service-based business for 10 years. I mean, that's literally what I've been doing all of my life. It was consistent, regular income. And I took on a completely different direction by consulting and coaching. And the industry I started out in was the beauty industry as far as, you know, my brick and mortar business. I owned a, a full service salon and day spa. And I was a stylist prior to opening the salon, but as a consultant, it was completely different because I was consulting with industry, all industries across the board. And it was such a huge um, and new experience for me. But one of the ways that I was able to do that within three years, I was able to um, replace my income. I now you know, work from home, whereas I was trading all of my time for dollars you know, prior to that. But I did it through affirming where it is I wanted to go. Um, I also used affirmations to maintain a sense of joy. I was sharing with you all, if you've ever been in a, a long-term connection or relationship with someone toxic, it could be a family member. It's debilitating, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm laughing not because it's funny, but you know, just to think about um, some of the times that, or how long I was dealing with different things um, and to think that I really recognize it and I understand it now. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so particular <clears throat> about um, staying connected to things that don't serve me, right? And so as entrepreneurs, I mean, it could be a toxic client, you know? I, I was um, servicing clients, you know, hand-to-hand -hand for at least a good 15 years and I probably only had three people that I just couldn't service them. They were just so toxic and they had been coming to me for years and it took everything on the inside of me to tell them that. But I've gotten to a space where I understand, remember where I shared with you at the beginning of this broadcast, that he was sharing that most oftentimes when we're in a space where we can't pray, it's because there has been an attack on our soul. Remember our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And I believe that you know, thinking thoughts that are corrupt or um, they're not of good communication come along with being in, you know, toxic situations. So I just wanted to share that with you guys if you've ever been to a space where you could not, where you feel like you can't pray. Like it's, it may sound weird to some people, but I've been there where I'm like, I can't even pray. Like I could listen to you know, sermons or, or people preach, but when it got time for me to pray, I would either get real sleepy or I couldn't find the words. I couldn't even pray in tongues. I couldn't pray in the spirit. I, I just couldn't pray. And um, it was one of the emptiest feelings that, that I've probably, you know, ever felt. And I was just wondering if, if any of you had endured it. And then coming on to share some things with you that you can do to help come out of it because I also noticed, I also remembered 
that during that time that I couldn't pray, so my affirmations, the the practice of affirming where I want to go and, you know, making declarations is something that I practice continuously. And during the same season that I couldn't pray, it was also a season where I was not using my affirmations. I had, you know, I was so busy, I guess, I just adapted this different routine in the morning. And affirmations really, there's a, a, a doctor who talks about how thoughts can retrain your brain. So most of the things that you talk about and you think on a daily basis are really coming from your conscious mind, like right in the moment. But beyond that is our subconscious mind. And this is where our real thoughts are like embedded. That's like where um, the heart of it is. You, there are several scriptures that talk about the heart. Like um, one in particular says, <clears throat> the heart is deceptive, who could know it? The heart is deceptive, who could know it? And that's because the heart is normally the subconscious mind that you aren't even thinking about. And so the practice of affirmations begin to retrain your brain so that you can actually believe whatever the goal is that you're going after. <clears throat> does that does that make sense? Hey, Stacy, can you hear me? Houston, you guys are coming back back and forth. Nobody put clear in the comments. Can can anyone hear me? Is it going in and out? Somebody talk to me. Let me know what it's doing on that end for you guys. Can you guys hear me? I'm hoping you guys can hear me. If not, I'm hoping that it at least records. Let me see. I'm going to write it in the comments. Let's see. I see listening, but maybe it's going in and out. Can you guys hear me? Somebody let me know something. Now, it must be that no one can hear me because several people have come on and nobody has responded to that. Oh, and you guys are coming back and forth. That's the weirdest. Jacqueline is listening. I see several people joining and then some of the same names recurring again. Should I hang up? Should I? Evidently, you guys can't hear me. Well, I'm going to end um, with that. But I talk about mindset so much, guys. If you, if you feel like there's some things that you want to manifest, some new goals, or if you've been in stagnation, or you need a new level of progress, um, productivity in your life affirmations have blessed my whole life and I was sharing with you guys that even the time that I felt like I couldn't pray um, I realized and I told you I heard a gentleman tonight say that um, when we are in a space where we can't pray it's an attack on our soul and remember your soul is your mind your will and your emotions so it's important that you are putting yourself in environments that are affirming. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't allow correction. That's not what that means. But I mean, you know when um, whatever's being said to you is not said out of goodwill. You know, like not being in toxic uh, situations. It's so important, guys, because it affects so much of our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. And that's the part of us that is fighting to get in alignment with with the spirit that's in us you know once we give our lives to christ and if that part is under attack if we can't even pray right then you know manifesting new things and different things in our lives becomes really 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 difficult so i wanted to share that with you guys and i also wanted to invite you to um to get the affirmation guide it's over 120 affirmations It's broken down into six categories of your life career and finances home and relationships health and wellness 
Um, and then there's three more. I'm not going to name them off, but it's in the link above. Um, it's $21, but for Black Friday, it's $9.97. So you get a digital copy of it. Um, it's simple, it's powerful, and it's impactful. Um, it also gives you opportunities to create your own affirmations. So there's over 120 affirmations inclusive of those six areas of your life. It's ways of ways that you can affirm where it is that you desire to go. You can retrain your brain. So if your brain has been telling you it's not possible, um, I can't do it. Um, if you've been unhappy, there's one on mental um, and emotional affirmations that's really really good that helps you operate from a space of joy and it teaches you how to use the affirmations uh, now it's not this i'm gonna say this and then tomorrow i'm gonna go outside and it's a bentley outside that's <laughs> not what this is about this is about retraining your brain this is about actually um implementing the affirmation process into your life i've used it so many times guys it's how I took things that were on paper for me and on my vision board like it was another step to it that I was missing and that was changing my mind in order to achieve those things and so I had to retrain my brain I, I in one way I had to retrain my brain was about how I earned money because I had earned money by trading my time for the money um, if you guys work a job and you punch a clock or you get a salary you're trading your time for your money or if you do clients then you might say, well, the only way I get money is if I do a client. I had to retrain my brain to actually believe that I could earn revenue while I sleep, that I could work from home. And so those affirmations helped me to shift my thinking, not only about my finances, but about my relationships. Um, there's a section in there for your um, self-esteem. There's a section for uh, your learning and self-improvement. So it's, it's power packed. I really, really put a lot into it, um, and it's such a, it, it's not, um, if you follow me, you know, it's probably one of my, it's, it is my lowest um, offer that I even have, but I wanted to provide something really powerful for you guys, because a lot of times we're looking for the shiny stuff, and we can do those shiny things, but not maintain them, and what we're saying on a regular basis you know, what we're saying, the thoughts that we think, they all affect the actions that we take. And so if you're wanting to um, manifest new things in your life, you know, increase your productivity, if you want to stop having limiting beliefs and sabotaging thoughts, <clears throat> um, affirmations are an amazing practice to implement. And I also included um, several scriptures that align with... Um, you know, God's desire for us to speak highly and the power that, that words and, and our thoughts have in the process of us living in abundance, which is his desire. So that's my take on tonight. Please do me a favor and share this out. Um, if you know someone who you feel could use um, affirming thoughts and words in their life, um, they need to be lifted up and they need to hear themselves lift themselves up be sure to share the link at the top. Um, you guys can click it. There's an automatic download. I had some struggles with the ebook store, um, but I'll definitely get a notification when you uh, when you um, sign on to get it, and I'll have your email address, so you should be able to access it immediately. But if not, as I said, um, I'll have your email address. And I'll be able to send you a link to open the digital product. But if you've had trouble praying, if you ever felt like you couldn't pray, um, start affirming. One of the things I did was I prayed, you know, like not like I normally do, but I just spoke. I said, God, I, I need help. I feel like I can't pray anymore. And I started being even more consistent about reading my word. And then before you know it, I was back to um praying fervently like all throughout the day or just sporadically you know i got my prayer life back because i was in a space where i couldn't pray and it's another reason i share with you guys before why i'm so particular about um being being in uh the company of things and or situations that don't serve me 
because it always impacts your soul. Remember, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotion, emotions. And that's what you need to manifest. Whatever it is that you desire, your mind, your will, and your emotions are the driving forces behind it. And so when you say affirming thoughts, you build up your mind, your will, and your emotion to be able to do that, to do those things. And for many of you, because of what we learned in you know, our early childhood, you'll actually be retraining your brain. You'll be adapting a new mindset and your mindset is everything. Your mind has a lot to do with your money and everything else that you set out to do. You guys have a super blessed night. I am definitely about to pass out. This is probably the latest I've ever broadcast, but I really wanted to share that with you all. And for those of you who were in, in anticipation of the release of the affirmation book, because I did share it yesterday, <clears throat> I wanted to make good on, on what I said that it would be released today and give you an opportunity to get that. You guys have an amazing day. Peace.